Coming off a tough 3-1 loss against Dedham that saw our seventh inning rally fall just short, Raiders softball looked to take advantage of a struggling Medway Mustangs team coming into Lee Field on Thursday. In the first, Raiders bats get right to it, taking the first pitch is Sammy Tong, who drives it into left for a double. Tong would then score Wellesley's first run on an RBI double by pitcher Julia Pearl. Later in the inning, now leading 3-0, Julia Gagosian would line a laser up the middle. Jessica Howard rounds third. The throw is there, but it gets past Medway's catcher. And just like that, Raiders open up a 4-0 lead. Top second, though, Mustangs strike back. After scoring a quick run on a throwing error, Mustangs have a runner on third until lefty Laura Harkins drives the runner home, and it's 4-2 Wellesley. Mustangs would add yet another run until Casey Sheehan pops up to Emily Dudak. And the Raiders escape the inning, holding on to a one-run lead. Score is 4-3. Score remains the same until bottom third, second and third, one out. Wellesley's pinch hitter Alice Rocha drops a perfect single down the first base line, sending both runners home and extending the lead 6-3. Big inning continues as Raiders pick apart Medway's pitcher Julie Kasparian throughout the game. Julia Pearl's fly ball falls between two Mustang outfielders, scoring two more runs for Pearl's third RBI of the day and a five-run lead. Raiders come out of the third inning, leading 9-3. After three runs by Medway in the second inning, solid relief pitching by co-captain Sarah Goss denies the Mustangs from scoring any more runs. The bottom fifth would end up being the final inning as the Raiders score four more times. The game automatically ends as the mercy rule goes the Raiders' way. Wellesley wins big at Lee Field with the final score. Raiders 13, Mustangs 3. And Wellesley continues with their hot streak as they face the 10-8 Walpole Rebels. Raiders get out to a quick start in the bottom first for the second game in a row. With one out and runners on the corners, Julia Pearl steps up to the plate. Consistently clutch at the plate this season, Pearl patiently fights off seven pitches until she finally loops a single to left and scoring two Raiders. Bench player Olivia Hunter gets the start and makes it count driving it deep to right center for a stand-up triple, scoring Pearl. And after the dust settles, it's 3-0 Wellesley. Raiders would get all the runs they needed in the first two innings alone. As we go to the bottom second, bases are jammed with Raiders. Olivia Hunter grounds it softly, but ends up being the perfect spot with no throw and everyone is safe, and a run scores. Julia Gagosian's infield pop-up cannot be reined in by Walpole's pitcher Steph Sem, and that brings in yet another Wellesley run, making it 5-0 Raiders. Rebels are finally able to get a run in the sixth on a Lauren Reagan RBI single. That's all they can get across, and so we head to the top seven. With Walpole known for their dramatic comebacks this season, looking for one last rally, get the bases loaded, and only one Rebel out. But Sarah Goss would be clutch in relief once again for Wellesley, getting the second out by way of the K and snatching this line drive right back to her for the last out. Wellesley wins yet another exciting game, handcuffing the powerful Rebels bats to the final score of 5-1 over Walpole. Raiders in their last seven games are 5-2, outscoring their opponents 60-26. Now at 8-10, Wellesley continues to fight for a well-deserved tourney run. Looking to carry the momentum of a big 15-5 Bay State Conference victory over Braintree, girls lacrosse had another important matchup, this time facing a tough team, Newton North Tigers. And after a Wellesley turnover, Newton North strikes first when Summer Diaz dishes it inside to Captain Nicole Quinn, and the Tigers have an early 1-0 lead. Minutes later, Raiders would connect on an Ashton Krasikas restart to tie it up. Brenna Garfield then gives Wellesley a one-goal lead when her shot streaks past goalie Eliza Bresler and it's 2-1 Raiders. Ashton Grisigas would then drive the ball top shelf and we got a 3-1 Wellesley lead here at Spray. With about five minutes left in the first, Nicole Frontero goal and a Kylie Noonan score, and it's 5-2 Wellesley. But before we go into halftime, Newton North would gain momentum as two restart goals by Caroline Wise and Shannon Fitzgerald lead the Tigers only down by one, five to four after one period. Ashton Grisigas opens the second with yet another clutch score, giving Wellesley a two-goal lead. Raiders would continue to add to the lead 
And after this goal by Sophie Vernon puts the Raiders up 8-4, things are looking good. But that goal wakes up the Tigers' offense instead, and Newton North orchestrates an impressive 5-0 run in the last half of the final period. Sparked by goals from Molly Devine and Captain Shannon Fitzgerald, the Tigers find a way to erase this deficit and retake the lead 9-8. Final seconds remain as the Raiders desperately try to tie it up, but time runs out. The Tigers celebrate their come-from-behind victory and Wellesley can't believe their lead slipped away. Raiders lose a tough one here, falling to Newton North by the final 9-8. Wellesley has a challenging road ahead of them as they fight to stay in tourney competition. Finally, we end a busy sports week on boys lacrosse who are 10-4 in an exciting game against the equally talented 10-5 Framingham Flyers. Expectations would be that an even matchup between two talented teams would be seen at Sprague. But the Raiders quickly showed they had a whole other idea. And so we kick off the first quarter just 50 seconds in. Matt Jama whips it past goalie Mike Montori, putting the Raiders up 1-0. After Tucker Dietrich's goal makes it 3-0 halfway through the first frame, Flyers look a bit shell-shocked and take a timeout looking to regroup. But next possession, Flyers turn it over and Wellesley makes them pay. TJ Noonan with the assist to carry line for the score. Raiders make it look easy, 4-0 Wellesley. With the Raiders offense controlling time of possession once again in large part to the leadership of senior captain Tucker Dietrich's ability to dominate faceoffs, Dietrich adds his second goal of the quarter here to make it 6-0. Fast forward to the second with back-to-back -back goals by David Jennings and Tucker Dietrich leave Framingham with the huge task of figuring out how to not only contain the Raiders' high-powered offense, but also how to do it without their starting goalie Mike Montori, who was injured in the closing seconds of the first half. Everything keeps going wrong for the Flyers as they head into halftime, shut out, down 8 to nothing. Third quarter, Framingham finally thinks they have scored their first goal as Ben Luz knocks the ball out of goalie Tim Rahill's stick. Ball goes airborne right to Jake Cotton. Cotton drills it in, but it's ruled no goal as Ben Luz was in the crease and the Flyers remain scoreless. Later in the quarter, though, Flyers officially do get on the scoreboard when Amir Kasapur top shelves it left corner pipe. It's 9-1 Wellesley. Kasapur finds somewhat of an offensive rhythm with his second goal of the quarter, but his team remains down by a lot, 9-2. Fourth and final frame, Raiders up 10-2. Give Framingham's backup goalie Kyle Maschioli a ton of credit as he did a respectable job on short notice in the second half, surrendering three more goals, but stopping the Raiders from another blowout victory. While the Raiders' offense this season has proven to be many times unstoppable, mix in first-year full-time goalie Tim Rahill's solid and consistent defense between the pipes, and the Raiders are certainly a dangerous team to face as Wellesley moves closer to a postseason berth. Flyers really never had a chance in this one as well as he gets another statement win, beating Framingham to the final score of 11-3. For this week's Raiders Sports Report, I'm Rebecca Karen.